Hey, we're not gonna waste any time before we jump into champion select and let's see what the band champions oh. are. Whoa, all the way through the band champions. And Jax, Sivir, LeBlanc again, I like followed it. by Zed, Janna, and Callista. First pick, yeah. Gragas. I really like the fact that Gragas is now the first pick and not the Hecarim. From before, I think that's what Giant should have done in the last game. I know it's always easier to sound <laughs> smart after, but we did yeah. talk about how Gragas, if you wanna if you wanna run that Corky, offers a lot more synergy because he works great in terms of disengaging. The Hecarim does not. So that was a bit of a problem for them, even though we never really got to that point because they fell so far behind. But I like the, the focus here because, once again, you can just do the Shivana into Hecarim, and that's a good matchup for you. So you don't really mind too much of he picks it up, even though he has shown he can carry on it. So I like, again, what Reason has been doing between games and how to try to adapt to it. Not saying that a Hecarim won't destroy you if he does yeah. get a good start. But. Wow. We'll see if Reason Gaming can uh, shut him down as hard as last game. But there's the Gragas, and of course you will take the other, which is uh, Hecarim in this scenario. What will be the second pick is going to be fresh now for uh, Rydor. So throwing that fresh back and forth, this time going over to Rydor on uh, Giants Gaming this time. And then Reason Gaming, they have the next two picks. Where do they go from here? What type of composition do they run? Do they revert back to their I mean, late game, the double tanks? Do they go for the mid game again? We, we would assume Shivana top yeah. is going to come in. They don't have to pick it now if they don't want to. They can go for that bottom lane. What they've been running, we had the Urgot coming in some points. Take bomb, whenever we had to blind pick his mid lane, has been the likes of Ari, so that's already been locked in for him. And very much the same kind of style for, for Reason Gaming, where you're going to have that scaling, scaling jungler, but you have some mid game in your mid lane. They've had Different picks like Lulu, last game here to secure that one. So they're trying to mix it up quite a bit and have different spikes in the game. So it's not just, oh, it's all pure late game, which is what we saw in game one, which really didn't work for them. Yeah, Giants uh, just a little too good at pushing their advantage in the early game. They lock in the Ari, as you mentioned already, for Take Fun. He's uh, pretty strong in that champion. Had uh, a little, uh, well, he's very good in the lane phase. He's very good at getting those advances, but sometimes just loses concentration and gets caught out late game, Seems which has like cost, yeah. uh, cost a couple games for them. But it will be the Nautilus locked in for uh, for Reason Gaming here. We'll most likely go into, su into the support. One day I wish for a top lane Nautilus, but I don't feel like it's going to be today. He's played in LPL earlier today. The man after so, my uh, heart. You're going to have to go watch them after. Obviously, they've been playing while we were playing our series here in Europe. A lot of League of Legends going on around the world all the time. Like every day you come on, there's a well. new thing going on. The wildcard tournament is here. There's so many things to watch. I mean, I know Trace played it, but uh, it, he, he lost, so. Yes, it doesn't count. If it loses, it <laughs> if doesn't If it loses, count. the game right, didn't right. happen. Okay, uh, it's only if, if it wins. Yeah. Fair enough, I'll take it. Nautilus Top does have his moments. He's, he's an okay pick, I'll give you that. But Reason Gaming is going to put him on support. I will guarantee yeah. you that one for later. For sure. But we're going to have Sojani locked in for Giants this time. Have uh, uh, What with the with the Gragas picked up will be the Sojani for the other jungler. And then Lucian has also been picked up as well. Saw that in uh, game one or two. Every game for Fantastic. Oh, every game, yeah. It's, it's, it's been his AD carry right now with Sivir being banned away. He's gone for Lucian. And again, he's done a good job in terms of the laning phase for himself. And we know how Lucian is, is a great all-around pick. He's not going to out-damage a Jinx in late game, but he's going to be stronger than her in the, in the early stages of the games. So there's always somewhere where Lucian will be impactful. And Sejuani, I really like that. Gragas is the first pick. That means either you go for the early game junglers like Rek'Sai, which hasn't really worked today. Gragas has always been the guy winning. So now we just try and match it with another late game scaling uh, jungler. And I'm a massive Sejuani fan, uh, fan. I think Hecarim, Sejuani together is such a good wombo combo coming in. If they have anything with AoE in the mid lane, I mean, let's just say an Orianna. I'm not expecting Paper Nero to play it, but if it was, you have such an insane AoE combo. If you do catch out an Ari or a Jinx, you just one-shot them. Well, there is that Jinx coming in for Selever in the bot lane there, so he does have that uh, late game AD carry, but interesting that he went for the Jinx here over uh, the Tristana, but we'll be able to get those resets and has that big tanky front line to keep him alive. We'll have Take Fun as well to blow up a target, get him excited for the passive and the Scion will be going on to Kuban as well. So what is the final pick from Giants? What will round out their composition? Because they have a lot of run at you at yeah. the moment. It's always hard predicting Pippa Nero's picks because he has such a big champion pool. Yeah. And even some of the picks he will pull out in LCS might not have practiced enough, but he's still confident enough doing it uh, for himself. So we're going to simply have to see if they want, let's say, a safe mid laner to add to more of a team fighting presence, if they want an assassin, maybe a twist of fate has been a pick for him, if he wants more global pressure. There's a lot of different options for him. 
in this uh, mid lane. We've seen this one before. This is typically when they run Sivir and these like hard engage compositions. And because you already have Sejuani Hecarim, that works in really well to dive onto a Jinx. And you can also ignore that big front line as long as you connect your Q onto the back line first. You just dash past them and then you put all your focus on getting the Jinx down in these fights. It's not going to be a fun game for Celebi in the start. Once it gets fed and if he has enough protection, however, that's where the pentakills start rolling in. Yes, indeed, to for sure. And uh, there is a big front line from Reason Gaming to get past, but in terms of going back immediately to the AD Karen, trying to peel when there's a Diana already there, it will be a little difficult for them. Yeah, and it's a very slow scaling comp now for Reason. It's yeah. somewhat what the random game wants. They do have Ari, who does offer some early to mid game pressure, which is good. But the rest here, we know the Cyan and, uh, and the Gragas. We're going to build full tank here. We take a bit of time. I mean, Cyan is one of the top laners who can instantly stack, our, stack tank items, which is good. But before you really have a massive impact, you need like two items where you can start dancing around in the middle of giants here and just start laughing at them when, when they hit you. Jinx, we know, takes time to scale up. She has great early tower pushing. But in order for you, order for, in order for you, in order for you to get there, it's already been quite a day. You need to be able to win your lane, and you're not going to beat the Lucian and Thresh lane for for recent gaming here. I wouldn't be surprised to see them swap again, shut down that Hecarim in the lane swap, and also get Jinx away from this early lane. Well, remember to hop on Twitter once again. We're in our fourth game here with Reason Gaming and Giants. Use RG win or GIA win to get in your votes onto Twitter, and we'll be checking in throughout the game. And we are in our fourth game now with Giants losing the last one. Reason Gaming staying alive in this series. And we'll see if they can carry on the uh, the hopes and dreams of getting into LCS. Yeah, this is much more a Giants composition that we're used to seeing from the LCS with a lot of engage coming in. Pepinero as well, being able to roam from his lane and try and well, apply pressure on the side lanes. You can't really do that on a Corky. You don't really offer a whole lot in that sense. Diana is more his kind of champion. And Giants definitely looking to start some fights and try and get to this back line of Reason Gaming, which consists of Jinx. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Take Fun will be dipping and diving throughout the fight. Whirlup is leading in charge, not quite in range for the hook just yet from Rydor. He would have to burn those flash for it, but Kuban has his own, so it just depends whether they want to burn those. Yeah, and we can see a difference here for Giants. After realizing that they got caught in that lane swap last time, it didn't expect it. This time around, they've gone into the enemy jungle. They place a few of these deep wards to see if they get any information. That ward, I believe, was placed a bit too close to the tower, so that's going to be cleared out. Yeah, it's gone. That's a big mistake from Giants if they wanted information that way. Ward has already disappeared. So they're not really going to see a whole lot except for these two wards in the jungle. And I guess they will see if Grump is being started. So at least they know. Okay, is there anyone on top side who's doing an early camp so we can see if they're swapping on our Hecarim or not? Yeah, Giants do have some information, but Adria is now going into that bot lane. Likewise, Reason Gaming tried to got their, uh, get their own vision and place the ward in the correct place. So they will see Adri heading into the bot lane here. Yeah, so they know the bottom side or what's on the bottom side for Giants. And look, there's swap going up to the top lane. It's a bit too late for Adri to recall now as well. So we will get the lane swap from Reason Gaming as expected. Trying to shut down that Hecarim once again, not running Smite. So worst jungle clear for Wordy, but at least he's prepared now. I think he saw Nautilus at the ward near the Grom and can now go double jungling and not walk into the lane like he did in game three. Pepinero didn't even clean up after himself in that camp. It will have to be taken up by Whirler as he goes by. Kuban, of course, going for those Raptors. We'll be able to get that level two. Glory and death as I kill Raptors. Fantastic. But I'm very interested to see if Reason Gaming can make that iteration from uh, the first game, go for those late game scaling comps. We saw Veggie, of course, giving the pep hook to his team and whether they can really make that work now because this is the composition they're going for. Yes, now they have some early game, mid game presence with Take Fun. Talking about Take Fun, he's getting harassed by Rydal. Doesn't land the hook. But can they make it work? Because Giants were able to get the early game advantage and push them out. They need to be more decisive when they're going for objectives. Yes. They can't just pull out of Dragon just because someone happens to be there. Exactly. That was really one of the big problems for Reason Gaming in the first game that allowed Giants to get such a big lead. And then Pepinero going crazy on LeBlanc. That's obviously been banned ever since in this series here. Frederick. Going to try and help Whirlip farm. It's a 2v2 lane, but Gragas is on his way. If they take this fight, it can be the same as in game three, wow. because now the Gragas is here. Nautilus is not very tanky at this stage, but Nidra is Whirlip. He's dropping low. One more auto attack. He's burning out from the Ignite. He goes down. Frederick as well is dropping low. He goes underneath the turret. First blood but goes Paul, over to Reason Gaming. This exact same thing just happened in the game before. 
Giants feel like they have to go for a fight up in the top lane and not respecting the fact that enemy jungler can't show up and they have zero vision on him. So they lose the fight. Gable first bot again. Really blowing the TP will at least get some farm this time around. But look at the difference already because the sign in the bottom lane farming some jungle, using his E to get some minions as well in the lane. While Whirlip is throwing himself into a 2v3, he doesn't even have to take. Groundhog Day in the promotion tournament here. Whirlip has uh, lost that first kill. We'll see if he loses another couple. Frederick trying to take on the Krugs. Uh, he does get the smite down. This is going to be close. Ryan he needs to call in, call in help from Rydal. He doesn't quite need it. We'll be able to take the Krug down for the extra HP and mana as he goes back to base. Uh, we also have the recall from Libic. He took a fair beating from that last fight. Has managed to go back and pick up the Relic Shield and the rest of his uh, consumables already had Relic Shield. But Whirlip now in top lane with Rydal will have him to support him there. Means Adri will be alone in the bot lane and Kubon will stump his way down. Yeah, Kubon once again is going to get free farm and XP now with this uh, solo lane for him against only a level 4 Lucian. Oh, he sell about though. He gets the Flame Chomp is down, but he's ticking down from the Ignite. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. Last tick will take down Celebr. A one-to-one -one now for Giants Gaming. Did he and not see Rydal walk into the lane? But he was he was farming minions with Whirlip, so he must have done. Okay, in the end, though, we must assume Rydal landed a hook there and just pulled in Celebr and secured a, a very good kill, a very important kill for a guy who's already in a situation where he could have fallen behind in farm. Then suddenly he secures a kill for himself for Technically, no real reason. Yeah, and that was a lot of fun that Salva just lost as well. Yeah. He's now a fair way behind his counterpart. It's a very and big deal. Yeah, it did go to Levick, but I mean, you want it on Salva. So he'll be walking back up there. Frederick now on the bottom side of the river. It's not warded. He did take the crab as well. Let's see if we can get anything done onto Kuban. He's level 5 versus the level 3, but Adri does follow up with the damage. Forces the flash. Got what he came for. Yeah, got the flash right now. Cut out Gragas is pretty far away. Obviously, Nautilus offers a gonna lot of CC, but not going to take down Rydal on his own. So, despite getting the kill top lane for Giants, they're still going to fall behind because the sign is sitting in a one on one lane with an enemy AD carry who's not really that far ahead in terms of XP. I think they're even out, but Audrey will hit level 6 first. Still not enough for him to really bully out the sign and deny everything, and that's what we see here in the numbers. And this is once again from Giants, being extremely greedy in these swaps here. Go for what they think is a 2v2 fight with the enemy dual lane, and then not realizing, well, the enemy jungler has super high chances nearby, we have zero information on where he is, and he obviously shows up, and everything gets turned around, and that's the first spot. Big wave being pushed in. Once again, Gragas is here. And they want to see if they can deny something, at least from Whirlip. This is Ooh. a risk from Libic, yeah. yeah. Hook lands onto Whirlip, and he will be tanking the tower. Actually, uh, Salivo was the one tanking the turret. He got the auto attack in before the anchor landed. And Zayu as well, they're looking for the dive once again. Whirlip is low HP, but it's a matter of who's going to be tanking the turret. It's going to be Libic tanking one more. They pick up the first kill onto Whirlip. Oh, Zayu dropping down. low, and he goes down, but he gets executed. No one tagged him. So still a 1-0 and zero over to Reason Gaming. That means the Giants, knowing that the pressure is in top lane, go for that dragon. Can they get anything more from the top lane, though? <laughs> they're trying to go around this turret, staying away from that barrel. Zayu will be the one to tank it, though, but Rydal's just going to kill well, Libic. Take is here take now. Oh, now. He yeah, takes him out with the play. And take fun, yeah, with the ultimate takes him out, but get destroyed by Fresh. Yeah, Rydal just dancing around here. Whirlip did go down, but sadly for Selavar again, he only got an assist and he lost more minions <laughs> from it. He's not gaining a whole lot from these ganks up in the top lane. It's, it's Livic getting the gold instead on this Nautilus. Let's see what the tower is on after they had all the minions die to it. So tower is down to about 20% HP top. Bottom lane, Kuban is doing a good job, is holding his own and farming away. So that tower is not even close to going down. And like, this is just an even lane, honestly, for him. It's almost like it's a standard, oh, it's going to be Lucian top lane. So he's getting all the farm he needs. And while Selva didn't get kills, at least they keep denying farm from Whirlip, which is what Reason Gaming wants to do. Yeah, they would also like to get Selva ahead well, I mean, because yeah. he's their late game security, but uh, even so. Bot lane, Adri taking out a fair beating from Kuban. Kuban has no flash, but he's vaulting. Has no flash. Oh. Into the wall, bam. Hey, he's out of there. Oh, uh, oh, Adri, yeah. <laughs> Cannon minion does a lot of damage. You can't take him on right now. You're in fairly low HP. Just have the flash and heal if he needs to get away from the cannon minion. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Nero does get CC'd up by the dredge line. Take fun, doesn't have any mana to really follow. The, the charm and CC. Pepper Nero has his own Lunar Rush to deal the damage, so they will be backing away here. Libic, despite those two kills, is still only level four, so he's somewhat squishy. 
He's been roaming on a little bit, get the early Moby boots, so he can try and impact the map. Celeva now freezing up top, saying, I'm done with this action here. I need <laughs> farm now, because I'm 30 CS behind the enemy AD carry. Despite me being part of two kills, I'm going to fall behind. The top lane tower is very low, so whenever Reason Gaming wants to end this lane top, they can just go push it in and then go down to the bottom lane, but there's no dragon at the moment. And the sign is getting free farm, so they technically don't have to enter swap. Also, with Celeva now being in an item disadvantage, if he can farm up for a BF sword before the swap around, he needs about 500 more gold. That's what Reason is waiting for before they take down this tower. You don't want to put down your Jinx now versus the BF sword Lucian. Yeah, he's also freezing away really nicely. I uh, will try to get upset now by uh, Adri and Rido, but for now he's just farming away. Zayo in the mid lane. We'll just make sure that Pepinero goes back to his turret as Take Fun comes in. Lots of just movement around the map. Not a lot really happening. But in terms of CS, mid lane is definitely ahead. Pepinero is getting an advantage. And we just talk about how recent gaming don't want to end the lane swap. And that's exactly why Giants are now swapping their dual lane to the top side. No dragon is alive. Item advantage for the Lucian. Already trading with Celeba poking him down near 60% HP. So Giants simply saying, we know what you're trying to do. We're not going to let you just sit back. We're going to now swap up here. We're going to push this lane and try and deny you more farm. And now Reason Gaming is forced to swap it around again. Send the Cyan top lane and then put the Jinx bottom lane. But Giants can keep pushing in waves faster and then swap with them and always look to, to find him. Celevar does not have enough for BF Sword and he's recalling now. This is really, really bad for him. Yeah, he has no way to get it either. He can't oh, even go Blade. That hurts my heart. <laughs> Avarice Blade and Boots. Not what he wanted at all. How close was he? I think he was like 1,300 gold from it. Last time I checked, was was 1,000. He only got one more wave. Kubon, so he gets hooked. He also gets flayed and boxed, and that's a lot of damage from Adri with the double tap, and will be coming over the, uh, with the culling. Rhino actually had enough damage to take him out, and Whirlip will be jumping in from the sidelines. There is another Q, the piercing light gets another kill. There's a third kill, and a two for one overall. Everyone just collapsing in on the top lane. Well, you're so strong with your dual lane at the moment, so keep playing around that here for Giants. Kill on to Sign, kill on to Gragas. Meanwhile, the average play Jinx is on the bottom side, but you can take top tower now, swap Lucian back down to the bottom lane, win the 2v2, and then use that to take the second dragon. Giants has a lot of options at the moment for how they want to play it, and it's all going to involve the Lucian being that much stronger than a Jinx. If you're an AD carry, and you're forced to go back and get an average play with your pickaxe, you just feel so useless. Like, even a minion can almost do more damage. <laughs> that's oh. a lie. <laughs> but. Yeah, I get what you mean to this year. But that's how you feel as the AD carry. Libic has to flash away here. There's the moon fall. Libic as well turns around. There's the depth charge from Libic. We'll be able to CC him up, but they already burned the flash and a big ultimate from them. It's good for Giants. What should Nero be top still side staying now? in the bottom side. And Kubom is just sat up there clearing the minions. Whirlip has to be top now. You want Adri down against this Jinx in the bottom lane. Who's mid lane at the moment for Giants? It's the Sejuani having to defend. So right now they're losing two lanes instead of them destroying a bottom lane and having Pepinero sit mid. This he's is gonna get a kill. dangerous. I mean, he's, he's gonna, gonna die. die in return, but question of who's gonna go to, it has to be Zayo in this case. Get bonked. And he goes down. One for one, bottom turret will not be falling today for Giants Gaming, and they lost the middle lane because Take Fun will be taking it. So they really want to get this top tower. And as you said, now they lose mid because they put Pippinero bottom lane. I really don't understand what Giants is doing right now on the map. Instead of just having two even lanes and a winning lane, they decide to get two losing lanes. Pippinero diving in on Celeva, realizing he's going to get ganked, so he just wants to get a kill. But this is a Diana with no mobility in a long lane and zero wards. So that's just an easy setup for Reason Gaming. And of course, poor little Celeva has to die again. Yeah. It's, uh, not a good day. Eventually he'll get farmed up. Eventually he'll be relevant, but uh, it's not yet. So 5-5 five and five on the total scoreboard. 500 gold advances to Reason Game, but the first dragon did go over to Giants. It is spawning in right about now. Yeah, so Giants really wants this top tower before they go down to the bottom lane. Giving time for Jinx. Now they can at least poke it down a little bit more, maybe. Go for a little bit on Kuban again. But this means there's five guys, or four guys, sorry, from Giants on the bottom side of the map if they do want to start a dragon. They can't really do it, honestly, because Jinx is so weak. But at least they got more time, and they got a mid tower they shouldn't have gotten in the first place because Pippinero was forced to sit bottom lane. So right now, people have gone back to base, started to pick up their larger damage spikes, and the mid lane is Ludens on take fun again. 
Great early game item. Like uh, on the opposing side, do have Pepinero going for the Abyssal Scepter. The junglers are uh, doing what junglers do, go for those Cinder Hulks uh, on those big tanky junglers. Top lane has managed to pick up his home guard, so he's not as far behind as he was last game. But he is still behind Kubom, who is uh, just getting tankier and tankier at this stage. Looking for the Frozen Heart. There you go. Picked up the Frozen Heart and just getting some health now to go with it for the more effective health. Definitely been a better early game for Whirlip. Got a few early kills for himself and they've been always putting him in a safe lane. Tower now down for Atri. So I guess the reason Giants wanted to do this was just knowing that Reason couldn't start that Baron, oh sorry, the Dragon anyway with how weak Jinx was. And they could get the top tower down. Still gotta use the window they have with Illusion being so far ahead of a Jinx. I'll take fun in the mid lane though. We'll be jumping into Pepe Nero, looking to land the CC. There's not the charm. There's the Orbit Deception. Pepe Nero does get out. Now, Vintage. Oh, uh, Frederick does find Libic. There's the ultimate, lands onto three people, but the knockback from Zayu kind of trolls his teammates a little bit, but Frederick has to go back into the fight. There's the lantern to save him though. In the top side, Pepe Nero is still chunked from his trade with Take Fun. Doesn't mean that Take Fun doesn't have his ultimate. Now the dragon gets started by Reason Gaming, and Giants are trying to potentially get a steal off. There is the Power Rider herself trying to get in range. The hook lands, in fact, and there's the ultimate. The dinner bell rings, and Kubon finds his dinner for himself, takes him out, and now the dragon is an easy take for Reason. So Reason Gaming ends up getting the dragon anyway. Archie just returned down. He has an Infintage completed. Go find that Jinx. Shoot her in the face over and over, and that's a free bottom and tower for you. Celebar has to just go back and honestly leave the lane. And Reason got a dragon they should never have been able to pick up in the first place with how far behind the AD carry was. Whenever you're in solo queue against the Jinx, just hit Deficio in your head. Just find Jinx and shoot her in the face. That's how it works. That's how it works. I've been playing a lot of Jinx in solo queue lately. Oh, yeah. I feed so much. <laughs> Low mobility. Yeah, not the strongest. Someone gets on top of you like a Hecarim or Diana. And then everyone, Diana, everyone plays dead. like Graves and everything and you're like, well, Graves in Dilution, have fun. You're just going to dash and cool. box shot you in the face. Or oh, Kalista, that's even worse. <laughs> Indeed, especially the Morgana. Doesn't know how to black shield. But Frederick now in the jungle is taking up his red buff. We'll be smiling that one away. No big objectives to fight over just yet. Let's take a look at the item builds as well. You were talking before about the infinity edge being finished by Adri. Big spike for him. Seliver, he's got his BF sword. Finally, yeah. And he did not get punished when he was sitting on, on pickaxe and average blade. He got to just have a free lane, honestly. He died once to Pepe Nero. I'll give him that. But for the rest of the time, he got to honestly sit back and farm. Now Audrey is down here. He still has the item advantage. He needs to use it, so Rydal should join him in this bottom lane. And then you can have Hegarim pushing into the tier 2 tower top. While you apply pressure on the bottom side of the map, that's where you invest your ward. That's where your jungler should be. Let the Hegarim just farm. Nothing else. Frederick needs to be on bottom side. So if there can't be a gank happening from reason. Because that's the only way they can win the bottom lane matchup at the moment, is if there's a gank coming. And look at the Kragas. Talking about gangs, they're setting up for one. Hook lands and it will be on to Rydal as Adri sidesteps it, follows up with the staggering blow. He goes down and that goes over to Zelava. Uh, Whirlip though with the devastating charge picks up one, looking for the second onto Zelava. Just needs the rampage, but the flash ward from Adri will get it. Kubon teleports him from the top lane, get the ultimate down onto the two players. And there's the follow up with the Hecarim once again, looking for another kill onto Zayu. That's the triple kill, but there's no escape from Take Fun and he'll take him down. That's a three for two over to Giant, but we might not be over yet as Pepin. Nero is circling the from the team. top side, lands onto two, the jump over the wall, the Lunar Rush, looking to kill both of these players. Kubon lands a perfect decimating smash underneath the turret. Take Fun doesn't quite have the damage, but there's the swing from the Q. Still not enough damage as he heals up slightly with the Pale Cascade. His girl got the shield, the flash ward by Kubon. Take Fun finally takes him down. And that was an extended fight, but overall it was a free for free, I believe, for both teams. It was, even in the very end here for recent gaming, we just talked about how the only way they can protect the Jinx and win the 2v2 matchup is if they start ganking it, and they did. There was no response for Giants just yet because Frederick was running on the top side. TP did come in, they got a few kills oh, for it. Oh, decimating special to Rydal though, with the Orb of Deception, both swings land onto Rydal, looking for the last auto attack, does get chained into the turret, and Take Fun looks to land another onto Audrey, doesn't quite get it for another one-on-one, -on -one, or one or full one on the support. 19 kills, 18 misses. So look at it again here, look how Giants is positioned on the map. Rydal and Adri is alone on this bottom side. The first gang is great. TP comes in from Hecarim. Reason trying to disengage. Get two kills. But now you have that problem where the rest 
of the members from Reason can come down faster and turn around a situation where you technically should have been able to just get a few kills or maybe taking a tower and nothing else. Take fun comes in. They have a good game on Ari so far. Seen this before though, Deficio. Good game in the early game, the mid game. Doesn't quite get through it. We have indeed so. It's the last dive flash away. Pepinero doesn't have the damage yet. Building for Nash's tooth. He's done this before. And then what he wants to do is obviously go split push. If you go Nash's second, you have to be able to split push on it. Otherwise, our glass is so much more effective in, in team fights for him. So that turns into a 1-3-1 one, one setup for Giants with Hecarim in one lane, Diana in the other one, and then Audrey sitting in mid lane. But they need these outer turrets down before they do it. And it's taken such a long time with the way they've prioritized having the members on the map. And that's why Reason Gaming is ahead and goal. Uh, now in the bot lane here, Adri is ahead of his counterpart. He's ahead in gold of Saliva, but those extra kills have definitely helped him out. Finally got the Infinity Edge. Still has the Avarice Blade, but that's been ticking for a while now. Has been getting him the extra gold. Has gone for the Berserk Greaves over his uh, He's opponent. matching an item plan. And he Almost. is even. Well, yeah, he's he's basically even, which is really good for these team fights. Needlessly Large Rod picked up by Take Fun as well. 4-0 and 1. He's definitely... Uh, Help them get through the early game, which is what they were really looking for. Now they have those big super tanks, the Zayu and the Kubon. Giants now securing the Vision over the Dragon area. There's around 60 seconds to go, so now's the time they'll start fighting over Vision. Mid lane, actually clearing out this with the rest of his team, trying to get something done, but it is Kubon coming from the top lane. It's coming in from the side. Oh, the Gragas! Took out that minion. And the minion. Yeah. Got Showing it. who's the boss here from Kubon. Yeah. Scion greater than ranged minion. All right, we need Pepinero on the bottom side of the map. He's not going to offer a whole lot in the mid lane. Will it? Looking to trade a little bit. Not the most exciting trade in the world. No, he's not even scratched the soul furnace. He eventually gets it. Now let's see what happens around this dragon. Zayu. Getting caught. Very mobile fat man, though. He is able to get through the wall with his body slam, but it allows the Giants to get even more vision over the area and, more importantly, clear it out from Reason Gaming. Again, Frederick does find Zayu looking for that body slam. So another couple of seconds cooldown, trying to find a good way out of this one, but it's not going to happen. Eight seconds to go. He's not going to be around for this dragon, and Giants should be able to pick it up. Yeah, Giants will get this one now. That's for sure. Mid tower might also be one to focus for them. And I want to see what Pippinero decides to build after this Nashus. I personally, even as a split pusher, I think it's bad as a second item because you don't have enough AP to buff up the damage of it properly. And also, you scale so well from your passive, so flat AP is so effective. Even in a split push where you get all these auto attacks and minions, which then transition into the passive hits in the one on ones. Typically, split push, I'll, I'll do a third item. Probably do like Abyssal. Could Zonia's. either go Zonia's out, Death Cap, and then Nashus yep. for himself. I've seen some players do Morel and Nomicon first because they want cooldown reduction in the in the one on ones. But they're different takes. None of them. Often ends up with Nash as being the second item, though. Yeah. But Pepinero definitely looking to be this way pushing threat with the Hecarim as well. And Reason Gaming doesn't have a whole lot of answers. Cyan is not going to be able... Well, he's going to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and kind of just try and wave clear, but that's about it. Bottom lane, you're going to have to send down that Ari in the one-on-one. -on -one. And that's not where you want it to be, because then there's always vision on, on, on her. And he, she has so much pick potential if you play around your wards properly. But you can't do that, do that if you're stuck defending. And that's a problem for for take fun if that does end up happening. Because you always wanted to sit around the enemy jungle where you have a pink ward and someone face take you into a charm and then you create a pick. I do wonder how tanky Kubon is up against an AP threat like Pep uh, Pepe Nero. He does have the Spirit Visage right now, but I'm not sure if it's quite enough. He does have the Tabby, but he is, uh, doesn't have the biggest amount of farm in the world, whereas Pepe Nero, 223. Yeah. And he will never have the damage. The he will never have the damage to take down the the, uh, the Diana and force her yeah. back with the shield. Or even the minions coming in. So you got that problem where every single trade will always go in favor of Pip and Arrow, and you can keep pushing waves over and over. And that's obviously not good for for Coupon. He's back down towards his middle lane once again. Pip and Arrow's joining the team, and they're engaging. Flash the engaged whiffs. He becomes behind. Gets the the slow on to Salva, the home guard teleport from Whirlup. Who is he going to jump on? It's going to be Salva, of course. Can they get the peel down? Yes, they can. He'll be jumping away with the Onslaught of Shadows back to his back line. But Libic has dropped, but so is Frederick. That's a more valuable member. Pepinero into the back line, though. Takes down Salva, looking for more to take fun. And everyone is in full retreat now from recent Ooh. gaming. Pepinero with one more auto attack would have bit the dust, but stays alive. A two for one trade for Giants, but they're all in critical condition. Yeah, they engaged in here a little bit before the TP even started from Willip. Hook onto Zayu. No, oh, just dashing away once again. Bottom and tower is open. TP has to be used from Kubon. 
But this one here, the engage happened. Would it TP in a little bit after? Did it still managed to get a two for one with their very, very strong Lucian at this point. Yeah, we'll be taking the middle turret down as well, taking one more tower for the Giants team. They are now still only one tower behind. They do have a dragon over their opponents of reason and 1,000 gold advantage all in all. Top lane, the uh, Wallop is having a much better time on Hecarim. Has the, uh, basically his core item build now, has the Frozen Heart as well for the cooldown, for the everything he wants really in that top lane. Mid lane still has uh, the Abyssal Scepter, but has also now picked up his Nash's Tooth. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how much scaling he's really get from it. I assume like 30-something AP from uh, from the extra AP he's got. I mean, 60 AP from the Nash's and yeah, the damage every hit is kind of giving him 50 or 36 extra. Yeah. So 50, around 50 in total for him. Who won his wall? Oh, wall he's showing there. And can dance around the wall. And then he checks every single bush that way. That's how you yep. face check, by the way. <laughs> yeah, run at, uh, uh, run in at full speed, and uh, anything that's in the bush will run away from you. Perfect. Livic though in the mid lane will take a double tap from Adri. He's doing pretty well himself. Two zero and six has those two big damage items. Has the Phantom Dancer and also the Vamp Set. Meanwhile, Pepper Nero looking for a pick in the jungle, much like he did with Le, uh, with LeBlanc. A little less maneuverable, perhaps. Whirlib is going for this engage onto the Celever and uh, take fun. He does get the damage down, but now he has to kite away from them. Adri now comes into the fight. Pepper Nero swings in from the left hand side. There's the ultimate. This time it lands onto Celever. Gets the lockdown. Kubon over the wall, though, in with the peel. But he carries already dead from Reason Gaming. Now they have to, to try and get away. Take fun is getting destroyed by Adri. Is able to get away, though. Doesn't quite have the damage to finish him off. Hits him with the permafrost, but it's still not enough damage. And Frederick is playing with fire because he can easily take him out. Meanwhile, Adri trading up against Kuban in the bottom lane. Less of a trade, but more of a Kuban running away. The flay back into the team. Should be enough damage here. Pepper Nero trying to land the last bit of damage. Not quite enough as the Soul Furnace comes up. But Hecarim takes the middle turret. He was just pushing me in the meantime. And Giants really want to keep fighting in the mid game. They're so, so strong with Adri. And this Jinx, there's just not enough protection for it at the moment. Whenever the flank comes in, you just see Celor being caught out. And as we said, he's going to be the target every single time. Like, he's the back line. For recent gaming, he's going to be the main damage source when we go late. Now, Takeman does have still a lot for himself, but if you just target out one of them, one of the damage dealers in a double tank setup, then you will always win the fights. And which one is easiest to get? The Ari jumping around or the Jinx just standing in the middle saying, uh, I'm pretty, pretty lost here. I was about to say something really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're past that. that, we're past that. That was last year. <laughs> Uh, yes. Adri in the mid lane though. Oh, we're gonna see a replay yeah, though. Yeah, so look at this. Here's I mean, it. the problem is you never get to set up your, your front line to protect the Jinx because Giants is coming from different flanks. Pip and Air as well coming down here on the bottom side. So Celeba takes so much damage in his start, and then it's just a good ulti from Frederick onto him, which does kill him in the very end with the Grump buff. So your AD carry is now gone. Take front is the only real damage dealer left, and that's not enough to win the fight for Reason Gaming, and they simply end up being chased out. Giants are just looking to keep going for these fights here. One three one split push. Once the minion waves are in control, and they're pushing down towards reason. Rotate into that mid lane. If you find this, if you find the jinx, jumper, killer, and then you have multiple options. You can go baron, you can go dragon, or you have the minions already pushing in the other lanes. And you can just go catch them, like we saw before with the mid lane here, and you just take it down. Shoot the jinx in the face. That's what they need to do. To or control. become a horse and run into it. That <laughs> also works. On all fours, flippity cloppity. Zayo over the wall though, does get the barrel down onto the Paro Rider and the Paro. The monstrosity of a Paro, they don't look like that. Meanwhile, take fun, looking for the kill onto Pepper Nero, but Pepper Nero's already found Zayu in the jungle, in his own jungle, trying to ward. And he goes down, that's the jungle out of commission, and it means they will turn their attention now to Baron. It has been crapped up, has been warded up, so they know they're there. But Coupon's back in the bottom lane, he does have his TP. Can they contest this? Well, they have to, and I think they're going for it. They have everything ready on the carries here. And now, suddenly, Giants are kind of caught in the middle. That'd this is a good fight for reason. Uh, and the follow-through by Kubon as well. The smite goes zone over to Frederick, and this is becoming a very messy fight. Adri drops low. Giants will be dropping down. Uh, Whirlip will die as well. Pepper Nero turns on to take funny flashes away. Comes out with a decimating smash, knocks him up. Needs one more ultimate to kill the Ari, but doesn't quite get it. There comes the double kill, a four for one, but the Baron going over to the Giants. Only Frederick has it, though. Yeah, we're just the Grag is dead. Giant still felt like they could go for Baron, so suddenly they were caught in the Baron pit, couldn't get onto the backline of recent gaming.
took all the damage for it. Also on Ari, just with all the AoE damage when you're stuck in there. Racing Gaming, this is one of the ways they can get back in the game, and they took it. Giants just feeling maybe a little bit too confident there after that one kill on the Gragas. Ooh, inches away, Teemo's away from that dredge line. Frederick does get hit by the Q and the E, the Riptide, trying to get in range, but it's 3,000 HP, and now he'll just die instead. That Lantern isn't going to help anyone. Whirlip comes in and detonates Livic. The damage from the devastating charge. Kuban, though, does get hooked in by Rydal with the death sentence. But now take guys from back from base. I mean, what are they going to do here? Rydal and Whirlip have literally negative damage. And Whirlip's just trying to run away. Rydal dies. So will the Hecarim. The horse is down, ladies and gentlemen. And Adri tries to come into the fight, but he's nowhere close. 18 kills to 17. Giants had the control of this game, but they let it slip. Yeah, really making it a lot harder for themselves. Let's see the fight before at Baron. So they have five guys standing near it. There's still four members alive for reason. Nice ulti from Kuban into the middle of everything. And look at Take Funny and all the AoE damage. While Selavar, only Whirlip is jumping towards him, but he can deal with this one now because there's no follow-up. The rest is busy trying to kill that Baron. Rocket just misses. Ooh. And then Pepinero, he's so close. And getting that last kill. Take Fun, a lot of damage from him. And then... No, deny it, CC him, pull him in, four people dead. Yep. Then two more, three more, sorry, died at the Dragon. That's a lot of gold being picked up by Reason Gaming suddenly. Eight, zero, and four take for now. 250 CS, he has not died once this game to Fischio, and he's on three items. Yeah, so take for doing really well. Despite the Jinx being there, which is one of the hyper carries late game, it's not like Giants is in a bad spot if it goes late. I mean, you've got... Double frontline in Hecarim and the Sejuani. Lucian, for me, is still finding the kill later. Frederick, though, dropping low. Yeah, he gets caught out, but Take has gone a little too far forwards. <laughs> oh, gets caught out. He goes down. Frederick also gets CC'd by the death charge. And Willow takes another couple of rockets. Flying two people. The flying an AD from carry. The AD carry. <laughs> but Pepper Nero jumps in onto Sella with the flash forwards, looking for the double tap of the passive. The Light Slinger comes down. He goes out of there. And Zayu has to flash over the wall, comes out with the body slam. A free for one in favor of Giants. And the flank from Pepper Nero and Adri, of all people. Yeah, it was just take fun. It's funny how we've mentioned a few times he can have like a fantastic game and then the focus just like stops at a point. Yeah. Right here, he was caught in the front line under the tower by the Sijuani ulti and he ended up going down and then the flank happened from Giants after getting those kills. But as I mentioned before with the late game, the fact that Giants has so many ways of diving onto Jinx almost makes me like Giants late game more. Also, I think Diana is a fantastic late game mage herself. So Despite giving up a few kills, it's not like Giants is in a bad spot. Yeah. As long as they can keep the lead they have now, and they can keep diving onto the Jinx, they should be okay. I mean, a 7, 6, and 5, a 7, 3, and 1 Diana and Hecarim is still an AD carry's worst nightmare. Uh, you saw it right there, even though Adri's was coming in from the side for the assist. He's now three items on that AD carry. Take fun in the mid lane though, just clearing out these minions. Still, Reason Gaming have uh, pretty good potential to pick someone. We've seen it throughout this game with the uh, with the hooks, with the charms. Pepper Nero, though, has found Livic. The damage as well from the Lunar Rush, but he may have gotten caught out here. We'll be taking the Lantern, perhaps. Whirly comes out with a devastating charge. We'll sweep up the Nautilus. That's a uh, support down here. for 30 seconds. Looking to chase up the Cunning Lands onto the backside of Take Fun. Forces out the Spirit Rush. Whirly still tries to get in here. Kuon turns around with the slow. That's a Righteous Glory being popped by Frederick, trying to get in range. We'll be dashing over the wall of the Arctic Assault. Slows him down with the charm, but lands a great bowler on right onto Take Fun. And he will go out. 47 seconds on the death timer. They can do some serious damage to the base of Reason Gaming. Yeah, once again, Giants, they catch out Reason Gaming. So after that little mislab around the Baron, they seem like they've said, okay, so take it easy for a second. Look, what is our next objective here? What can we do to keep getting some kills? And they've been getting them after. No mini waves, though. Cause yeah, all being pushed up. Not exactly a fight you were planning for, so you weren't setting up the waves saying, okay, now we go team fight. It was more reason gaming trying to walk in and, and get a few deep boards down that ended up with Giants getting some kills. So they're going to take what they can get here. Now look at the wave top for Atri. Bottoming just been cleared by Whirlip. Juicy, Pick juicy. Up all the gold. 3k Pippin Arrow. Two and a half for Atri. Go back. Buy whatever you need. Go down to this Baron here. Set up with a few pink wards around it, get a few wards into the jungle of reason, and then just take that last crucial team fight, where the Jinx has to walk in with the team blindly, have no way of stopping the Hecarim, TP's gonna be ready soon as well. Giants right now, 
ball, the ball is in their court, and they have to be able to use it. Yeah, they've all gone back to base and picked up a lot of items here. Lichbane, Fawnmail, Mikhail's, Locket, Face of the Mountain. That was actually from Libic. But the rest of the items did go onto the team of Giants and the Last Whisper. They are so, so strong right now. 9,000 gold advantage is nothing to sniff at. It's really going to be difficult for Reason Gaming to, uh, to team fight, especially with Selva almost always going to go down, take fun a lot of this rise on his shoulders, and he can't have those lapses in concentration. No, and Selva has no flash for the next fight. Set up this Baron, put Whirly back in base, and just sit ready, because there are going to be so many wards for him in the jungle of Reason Gaming to TP too. Selva has no way he can stand. They have to honestly give up this Baron and just try and defend your base. Dragon is not going to matter at this point, because it's two for two. It is near impossible for Reason Gaming to go and contest this Baron. But at the same time, if they just give it for free over to Giants, how are they going to stop him from pushing into the base? I mean, you're in such a tough situation. And Celera at the moment, he just sits there and he thinks to himself, I'm going to die very, very fast in the next team fight with no flash. Yeah, Rydal's going to be handing him a death sentence. Curtis here, Pepe Nero, and Can he get Wurlip. ready in time? Uh, it's another 60 seconds, I think. It's not going to line up with either of the objectives. It's going to take a while. He does have heal, but he really needs that flash. No defensive items. This could be the flank here from Giants Gaming. They are on the front lines. Kubon's going to be trying to do all the no disruption he can. No home guard play in from the Hecarim. Well, Riptide did come out as well to uh, keep, up the, keep up the zone. There are two elixirs of iron, so that's a very big rag and a very big scion. You don't need Whirlip right here with your team. Put him back in base so there's always that TP threat against Reason Gaming. You've got the Silence under control. You had the Vision down. It looks like you just want to force a fight anyway without using that home guard. Yeah, pushing them into a choke point here. Giants Gaming are trying to get a pick onto Kubon. Taking a fair chunk of damage, he will have to flash away from Adri. Whirlip turns around, takes a decimating smash. Bottom and top are still pushing with the minion waves. Giants just need to push in here. We have zone them away, taking the vision control as well. the pink in the Baron pit as well. That's so important for them and so simple, and yet they're allowing that ward to it. stay. They do give Reason Gaming a chance to make Take a comeback. Fun. He jumps in. Zayu looking for the smite steal. It does not go over. It will go over to Frederick. Giants do have the advantage of the AP and the AD. Now Frederick jumps into the back lines. And the follow from Selva. He's not dead yet. No one's able to jump on him. Adri with the calling. Pepe Nero actually taking apart the front line. Goes into his passive. Now they just need to disengage from him. The shutdown goes on and to that Zion. And that is the ultimate coming in from Whirlib. Rather the home guard, the teleport. He already used the ultimate. It took down the rest of the lineup from Reason Gaming. Looking for the last kill onto Lebek. He'll be jumping away with the dredge line. But with 30 seconds on to the death timer, this very well could be game. Pushing in, there's no minions just yet there. Being caught a little bit by a few of the recent gaming minions, so I can at least get inhibitor. Let's see what else. I mean, there's so much time left and for so Giants. Tanky. All five members alive. You got Lich Bane, Nash is on your Diana as well, so you can wreck through these towers. Yeah. Going for it. Well, five seconds left on Take Fun. It's going to take a miracle to bring them back into this one. I d really just don't think they can do it. The towers are dying too quickly. Giants going on to the Nexus here. It dies so fast. And Giants 3 1 in this series, Deficio. They take it home. They've re qualified for the LCS. Very important for the team who said once they qualify to the spring split, our entire goal is to remain and stay in the LCS. They're now re-qualified, 3-1. Looked like the stronger team of the two, and definitely deserve to keep the spot in the LCS. Goal achieved. They Goal managed achieved. to maintain their spot in the LCS. Reason Gaming, so close. They had that game, the last game was within their grasp, but it wasn't quite enough up against Giants here. And uh, they were not able to play the hand they were dealt. Now this last game here, Celebar just got shut down so, so hard in the start. Like, he was playing that hyper carries three and nine when the game ended, just really, really hard <laughs> for him to do anything. And the Giants guys, of course, being happy. I'd be happy too. Well, now they're the spot. Another you know, split, yeah. Here. The ULCS. Yeah, and, he, and we asked the question at the very start of the series, have they improved more than Reason Gaming throughout the, uh, the spring split in the LCS? Looks like the answer is yes to that one. Well, yeah, funny thing is, last time they faced each other, it was very one-sided for Giants. Yeah, Again, six and zero. Six and zero in total, two best out of fives. Not even close. This one here, the first two games looked like, okay, this is just going to be Giants once again. Beating Reason Gaming, not even losing a single one, but Reason came back in the game three, which was a very good performance from them. Giants just showed, okay, 
It was one. It was a big mistake with the lane swap. This game here, they early warded at level one to try and spot what was going on. They saw, okay, it's gonna be a swap. We're not gonna be surprised. Despite still going up and dying then, at least they knew what was going on and they adapted a lot better and managed to simply get such a big lead that once again, despite having a few mistakes, in my opinion, where they gave an advantage to recent gaming they didn't have to, they still were so far ahead and could keep taking these fights and just win for them. They really shine when they play these very aggressive comps that can dive onto the enemy backline. And when Cellar was just sitting there all alone on a Jinx, like waving at them, there's not a whole lot that's going to stop them yeah. from going and killing him every time. And that's what they did in the team fights. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot Cellar by himself could do in that game with a Hecarim. Yeah, no, no, with it's a impossible to make a carry. You like no. Um, and especially when you don't have the flash specifically in that final team fight, what could he do? But And, and that was a kind of the weird thing with the way it was like Nautilus Jinx together. Nautilus is very very all in. Support or peel in the terms of if a saver is running at you, you like slow it down yeah. with the E of Nautilus. You don't really stop anyone from diving your AD carry per se. And that's where we're like Morgana would have been a way better pick. But that's all in the past now. Mm. Giants had some very good team fights in this game here. Whirlip got to show that Hecarim, despite having bad games, this series is still a fantastic pick. Once he gets a decent early game, and he can start flanking around these team fights. Yeah, I mean, there was so much pressure from Reason Gaming on the top lane of Whirlib, and yeah. it's twice in a row. I mean, <laughs> the last two Hecarim game didn't go so well, but this one, even though he died in the early game, he had enough to work off, and yeah. that's what we saw right there. He picked up a bunch of kills in the bottom lane. His teleports were great to bring himself back into the game. Yes, he lost his lane, but he saw those opportunities and he seized them. And heading into the next split, I mean, that's much similar to their performance in week nine than it was throughout the rest of the split. Yeah. If they continue their growth like they did over the last month since the LCS, we could have a stronger team on our hands. It does still seem like a bit of a problem for Giants that they rely very much on like one style to perform really well. And that's where when you play in the LCS and you play every single week, teams figure it out fairly fast. Like what happened in the spring split if people didn't follow Giants was week one, they came in and said, we have no expectations. We just want to stay in the LCS. Went 2-0. Yeah. They got Jack's two games, Whirlip went, Whirlip went crazy on it. And it's like, oh, Giants, they look pretty good. And then already from there, people kind of figured out, okay, how do they play? They banned away to the Jacks. Jacks. <laughs> and Giants just struggled ever, ever since, honestly. Okay, week nine was fine for them, but that was about it. So week one and week nine were the two big weeks for, yeah. for Giants. So they, looked to, could, they could still have the same problems. We're going to have to see now to get more time to practice. They have the gaming house set up already from the start. Yeah, it's very, very nice indeed. So let's head on stage where Pyrotechnics is standing by to talk one of the uh, to one of the returning members of the League of Legends Championship Series. Thank you very much, Pulse. I am, in fact, standing next to Rydal from the Requalified Giants Gaming. First of all, let me say congratulations on your requalification. And here's the first question for you guys, though. You said a lot over the spring split. We just want to stay in. We just want to requalify. We just want to make sure we're there. Well, now you've done it. Mission accomplished. What's next for Giants Gaming? Where are your plans going from here? Uh, well, I think uh, it's very early to do a, a plan because uh, we don't know the the teams in the next LCS. How it's gonna be the LCS or how it's gonna how it's gonna fight us or I don't know. But uh, I think the next goal for sure is uh, we don't want to play Royal Games anymore. Nobody wants to play relegation is very very terrible and uh, i think the this is our first goal for start the, the split like uh being the top seven for sure and uh, if we can keep uh, scaling and keep uh, doing better keep for next objectives i think well that is a good goal to go from there now what has to change for giants obviously you guys in ninth place a lot of people would say not the best finish. However, you really stepped it up towards the end. Uh, what do you have to change on your team, or do you just need to keep doing the same thing to get to that place in this next split? Well, I think uh, the last split gave us so much experience for in our play style. We 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 came like a challenger team. Like uh, we play the lanes. We we are not so prepared as a team. Uh, and I think the 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 this spring split gave us like. Uh, Experience in terms of uh, of team play, I think that's one uh, one point of of uh, our team. And I don't know, maybe the last couple of weeks we play out of the screens, we play more intensive, we play like uh, comfortable champions as well. And I think we, if we keep this uh, keep this this working and the the way we play and 
I think we, we, can, we can work as a team. Well, I'm glad you guys are coming together as a team, and it's always good to hear confidence. Now you'll be going into this next summer split. There's at least one different team. There may be another after today, but you guys will still be in it for sure. How do you think, uh, now with Oihen coming in, how does this change the landscape of the LCS? How do you think uh, it will be a little bit more different this time around? I think the summer split is is harder, probably, because uh, Oregon is a very, very, looks like a very strong team. I don't expect them to be at the top uh, in the table. I, I think they are in the middle, like high middle in the table. I'm not sure, but yeah, the summer split is going to be so hard, I think. And uh, But that's also a, a motivation for us for, for keep playing better. There we go. Well, uh, speaking of difficulty, we have one more matchup after this. Now, who do you think will take this next one? Obviously, Rocket versus Copenhagen Wolves Academy. If you just had to guess. Well, I think uh, it's not going to be a 3-0, but I expect to Rocket to win because the experience and you, if you you can see the the players from from Rocket, they are very experienced. They are they I don't know they play so good. They, if they this this last week fix some mistakes as a team they i think they they will they will beat Copenhagen Wolves Academy and well, we'll see if that one comes true once again thank you for joining me Rattle. congratulations on requalifying for the LCS you can go ahead and hop on over joining your victorious you, teammates and we're going to go ahead and send it back to the analyst desk to break down that matchup so why don't you guys go ahead and take it away Thank you very much, Mr. Technically a Pirate. Congratulations to Giants. We now know the nine teams in the summer split of the LCS. We'll find out one more shortly. Let's talk about this deciding game. First of all, it was very chaotic. It was very aggressive. It was quite messy at times, but at the end of the day, Giants ended up winning. Let's start with Sheepy. What was your take on this fourth and deciding match? Um, I think overall, both teams went off to a different kind of style solution with a lot of CS and top lane behind. It's like always this uh, equivalent. And then into the mid game, there was just a lot of fighting, 10-10 and kills at some point, And it was very, very close. And Giants just, I think, with experience, pulling slowly ahead and uh, winning the team fights for them. Stress, tell me a little bit more about this matchup and what you thought went right for Giants or what went wrong for Reason Gaming. You already alluded to how messy it was in general. Uh, I, I just kind of feel like reason, again, we, we talked about how coming into this, they when they get behind, uh, they can come back in games, but I felt like Giants, when they got a lead, were a lot more decisive. Only really that game three where uh, reason got the lead at 10 minutes uh, and a, a fair lead. It was, it was only a couple of hundred gold, but more than they normally get. Uh, I, I felt like... Giants were just able to control the game from being ahead rather than Reason being able to shut Giants out and drag it late. Yeah, I think also that what we've seen is just the experience from Giants flanking the back line. Yeah. And they just do this really well. We also see why those picks like Deanna, LeBlanc, Hecarim are really, really effective because they just reach at some point, do the turn, reach the back line, instantly kill them. And it was really... Not an easy game for the streets. It wasn't, and we just happened to have an example of one of these flanking side lanes. If we can pull that replay up onto your screen. It's very early on. Um, this was really the beginning of the end for a reason because um, Audrey just got so fed so early on. Uh, let's start talking through this play as Science trying to get away, Sheepy. Yeah, Rydal has a really nice hook. They burst them down below half HP to 80%. Ignite takes them down. He flashes out. Uh, the glacial prison, and then we see a really, really nice flash cue from Lucian. And what a what a nice play! I jumped up when I saw this, and yeah, really exciting. So Giants take the series three to one. Their aggressive, decisive play is something that we only saw from them really in week nine. I think they've carried it on this series um, for better and for worse. In fact, um, let's talk a little bit about looking forward now that they are back in the summer. But what does this mean for Giants, as uh, Pyrotechnics was alluding to in the interview? Yeah, th there's still something we have to keep in mind, uh, and this is going to sound a little bit disparaging to to Reason, which it's it's not meant to be. But more when you compare the likes of a Reason Gaming to an H2K, a Fnatic, and SK teams that even when behind are going to fight you, whether it be over vision, whether it's over objectives, and put up a lot stronger contention. 
I feel like we're still yet to see Giants do that against one of the top teams at all. That is what Giants now have to work on with Yamato Kan and their new coach. They have to get better in those circumstances and make sure they can continue on this kind of form. Yeah, we'll have to find out if they can continue to grow. It's nice to see at least from week nine to now their style has increased. And we want to highlight just one player who we felt was integral in securing that spot in the LCS Summer Split. A KDA of four, a kill participation of 62%, leading the way in stats. And it's our MVP of the match, Giants jungler Frederick. His performance in game one and two in particular stand out. I think his Gragas was phenomenal. And holding on to his Sichuani ultimates in the deciding game, um, again, very, very strong. Sheepy, you've got a particularly powerful jungler in your own hands. What did you think of Frederick and what he could bring to the summer split? Uh, I think he had a really, really strong performance on the Gragas, set up for really nice kills, killing the Urgard around Nashua and setting up for two towers inhibitor instantly in three kills. And just overall, the Gragas games were really exciting. Also, the body slam into the Cyan ultimate, you just see over and over the place. So I think we have a lot to see from Frederick. A lot to see from Frederick and a lot more to see from Wurlib. I think this yes. was the beginning of his growth. I, I feel like Wurlib went to, uh, to Madrid, saw the crowd, got re-energized by it, went to solo queue and was like, right, I'm playing Hecarim, I'm playing uh, Shivana, I'm playing all of these other Sion. champions, Sion as yeah. well. That was the first time for both of those champions he's pulled them out. See if he can continue because top lane is they're so, so integral right now in our meta. Willib just needs to keep evolving. I agree, and I actually like the Shivana pick in particular. It suits the same style as Jax, that heavy split push threat, look for duels with challenging smite. So we'll see if Willib can keep that pressure up. So with that win, Giants have reclaimed their seat in the upcoming European LCS split. And we'll take a look at all of the teams and how they stack up against the rest of the league. It is, of course, Origin and Giants back in there. A lot of Spanish pride. Um, we still got a lot of powerful teams here. We'll need to see whether or not these guys can make it count when we get to the regular split. So we'll play that when we get there. But for now, while Giants were busy securing that LCS spot, Brazil's INTS Esports took a 1-0 lead over Turkey's Besiktas in the IWCI Finals. The winner will be going to MSI, where they'll join Fnatic, TSM, and AHQ Esports, who've locked in their spots. LPL still needs to figure out who they're sending, and LCK will send either the GE Tigers or SK Telecom to represent Korea. We'll find out from their final next week. Huge props to the Oceanic guys who've been casting for five days straight. Back in the LCS, there's only one more room, one more team for the summer split. We'll be right back and figure out if it's Rocket or the second seeded challenger squad, Copenhagen Wolves Academy. Now, before we go, we will be hearing from Copenhagen. When we formed, uh, everyone knew each other uh, quite a bit already. And then we wanted like a, a powerhouse of the Netherlands. So we took pretty much the, everyone from the best, best in their role. And then we formed a team. And at first, we just wanted to um, like win Dutch tournaments, like small tournaments. And then, well, we got pretty good. And then we got into the Challenger Series. <laughs> So we didn't expect it at all and then we got so far and now we're here.